Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte. Welcome to my channel, Charlotte's Collection. I have a uh, Etsy shop that um, I make these aprons for, and sometimes here on the, on the YouTube channel, I and I demonstrate how to make maybe certain parts of the apron. Um, so today I'm going to demonstrate how to make the how to put the waistband and ties onto this half apron because sometimes I mean it's not necessarily that tricky but I do mine a little different because I put my uh, the ruffle into the waistband so uh, I'm not going to you know that one's already made so I'm going to start with a different fabric here's I have my pieces all cut out and this is my uh, the skirt part and it's kind of in a really cute confetti uh, type print and here's the this is the waistband it's going to be in a different fabric with the with the cute birds the uh, the uh, pockets will be in that birdie fabric also and then here is the ruffle which I've already sewn the the uh, him on the ruffle and added my gathering stitches in it. So you know you draw uh, basically sew two gathering stitches at the highest setting on the sewing machine, you know, and then you gather it. Pull the gathers, and I have a video about how to make a ruffle, put a ruffle on your apron. So and then these are the uh, the ties. So anyway, um, like I said. This is just mostly going to be a demonstration on um, putting the waistband on a half apron, including the ruffle part in it. So anyway, here we go. Don't forget to raise the length of your stitch to about five if you're going to be doing the gathering stitches or a basting stitch. Okay, so here I'm going to sew a basting stitch or another gathering stitch on top of uh, this pressed hem on either side of the waistband. And I, this stitch will come out later. It's like a gathering stitch, basting stitch. It's just there to help hold in that little hem. Okay, so I've got uh, have the two gathering stitches on the skirt, and I sewn the ruffle on the skirt. Now I'm going to gather the stitches and then sew them onto this. This is the uh, this right here is the waistband. Okay, so I, like I said, I sewed the two gathering stitches, but I only sewed on the skirt itself, not the ruffle part. And now I'm gathering, taking them and gathering, and I'm gonna fit the full length, including the ruffle, onto the waistband.
All right, it looks like the um, it's gonna fit onto the waistband. So now uh, with right sides together, I'm pinning the waistband onto the top part of the apron. And you make sure that the waistband is going in the right direction and get it all pinned up. And then I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew it together. All right, so I'm at the sewing machine and I remember to reduce the length of my stitch since this is gonna be the permanent stitch. And I'm sewing the waistband onto the skirt. And I usually sew about at about 2.5 for the length. And make sure everything's all nice and flat and uh, even so that you don't get any puckers or folds that aren't supposed to be there. Okay, so I took out the pins. Next, I'm gonna pull out the gathering stitches. Before I pull out the gathering stitches, I always make sure there's no, that I didn't, you know, sew a pucker. Because if you do, you gotta rip and do it over. And that happens sometimes with these, with the ruffles. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out all these white, this white thread, which is the gathering stitch. Got to grab it by the end. I usually do my gathering stitches in white thread so that I can easily identify it when I'm pulling it out. So, you know, now I have my fine, you know, my good stitch is in navy blue, and I don't want to get that mixed up. I don't want to accidentally pull that one out. So that's why I always do my gathering stitches in white. Okay, next thing to do is to press a small, like a quarter inch hem, and then do a basting stitch, as I've as shown there, onto the top part of the waistband. And then fold it over and pin it, and then take it over to the sewing machine. All right, now go back to the sewing machine, change your setting to 2.5, and make sure you have the right color thread in your sewing machine, because we're now, now we're sewing the final stitch on and we're sewing the waistband onto you know the back side of the waistband that has been folded over and hem inside and so that you don't see any of the raw edges and you can either do it on the good side or the back side whichever way you think is easiest so now we're going to pin the ties which i've already sewn onto the waistband and there's that little opening on either end and you're going to stuff one end of the waist tie into the opening of the waistband pin it together and then sew it if your ties are a little wider than the opening on the waistband what you can do is gather the uh, tie to make it fit. Gather it or and baste it and then so that or pleat it so that it'll fit into the opening. So I'm back at the sewing machine and I'm sewing the waist ties onto the waistband. And I usually sew it on like a rectangle so I can get extra, extra stitching there so it'll hold better. Okay, so I'm almost done. All I have to do is pull out the white basting stitches and sew on the pockets. 
and I'll meet you back over here with the final product. Hi everybody, I'm back with the finished product. Pockets are sewn and the ruffle is in sewn into the waistband. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my demonstration. If so, please subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. I will be selling this on my Etsy shop, Charlotte's Collection. So anyway, thanks for watching.